So something's happened to the hot end on your Creality K1. Now maybe this was user error, or maybe something just stopped working, but whatever the case may be, now you have a perfect opportunity to upgrade to something better than just the stock hot end. So what if you had a hot end that was not only a better design, but it was a direct drop in replacement for the K1 series machines. It was more reliable and gave you better options when it came to nozzles. Nozzles like hardened steel, diamond, and even high flow rate nozzles. Well, that's exactly what this is. This is the Micro Swiss Flowtech hot end. And today we're going to be pulling out the original K1 series hot end and replacing it with this upgrade from Micro Swiss. So let's open her up and see exactly what we're dealing with here. So right off the bat, we'll notice we have our instructions and then we have two inserts for the heat sink right here. The two inserts would be for the older style K1 series machines. And then this is the longer one for the unicorn nozzle style heat sinks for the K1C and upgraded max. Lastly, we have our hot end, a 0.1 millimeter nozzle and the silicone sock that goes over the hot end. So first we need to make sure that we free the hot end and the nozzle from any filament that might be holding onto it. Since we're replacing the hot end, we don't need to turn on the machine and retract the filament. All we need to do is pull the Bowden tube and simply snip off the filament. Once you pull the Bowden tube off, snip the filament, then just go ahead and disengage the extruder. This will make sure that the gears aren't holding onto the filament and once we unscrew the hot end, we can just pull everything out. So there are two screws securing the cover on the tool head. They're super easy to get to, one on both sides, the left and right of the tool head. Now, if you're running a K1 Max with a LiDAR sensor or you have an aftermarket probe, you'll most likely need to remove this probe so you can access the screw on the left side of the tool head. So now that those screws are removed, we can simply pull the cover off the tool head. Now keep in mind, there's a fan attached to the PCB. Right here, this is where the fan is plugged into the PCB on the print head. And again, more than likely, there's a little bit of glue on the side of it. All you really have to do is just scrape this glue loose and then you'll be able to pull the fan from the PCB. Now that we have access to the inside of the tool head, we can go ahead and start removing the stock hot end from the K1 series machines. Keep in mind, it's important to be a little bit patient during this process as you don't want to damage anything inside the tool head, especially the PCBs themselves. So first, we'll go ahead and remove the silicone sock from the hot end. Now that we've removed the silicone sock, we can just go ahead and remove both these screws from both sides of the hot end. Once the screws are removed, we'll just gently remove the hot end. We want to make sure that we don't pull it out because the wires are still attached to the PCB and we don't want to damage those connections on the PCB. So just like the fan on the front cover, these connectors are going to have glue on them stocked from the factory. So we want to be patient, maybe scrape a little bit of this glue off and make sure that we don't damage the PCB when we remove these wires. Now that we've removed the stock hot end from the K1 machine, we can begin to install the Micro Swiss replacement. The first thing we're going to need is the inserts for the heat sink for the K1 machine. Now again, there are two inserts. There's one for the older style machines, and there's one for the newer one that's using the unicorn nozzle. Since this machine uses a unicorn nozzle, we're going to be using the longer insert for the heat sink. So I'll be using the thermal grease that Micro Swiss provided with their hot end. What I'm going to do is just put a little bit on the insert right here, and then we'll smooth it out. We don't want to go crazy. We just want to get just enough on there and make sure it's smoothed out a little bit. Once you put this insert into the machine, what it's going to do is it's going to kind of move that thermal grease around and make sure it's evenly distributed. So you don't need to go crazy. Just make sure it's on there and then wipe off any excess that you have. Now all we have to do is gently press this insert into the heat sink for the K1. Now keep in mind, if you have a machine that's not running the K1 unicorn nozzles, your heat sink will have a set screw in the back that you will need to back out and remove. Now that we've installed the insert into the machine, we want to go ahead and get ready to screw the hot end into the tool head. To do this, there are two screws provided with the insert in the bag. Now keep in mind that the two inserts have two different length screws, so only use the screws for the insert that you use for the machine. Now this hot end looks quite different from the factory hot end that we've just removed from the machine. Now you'll notice that there aren't through holes for the screws for this hot end, but instead we have two locking arms right here that the screw actually interfaces in on both sides. The other thing is keep in mind that these wires, when you screw this hot end into the tool head, they need to be coming out towards the back. You don't want these coming out towards the front. 
So before we install the hot end itself, we're gonna go ahead and screw in one of the screws by itself. It doesn't really matter which side. Now with one of the screws placed into the heat sink, we can go ahead and take our hot end and make sure one of the indexing arms is on that screw. And this holds it so we can go ahead and put the next screw in. So now that the micro Swiss is screwed into the machine, we can go ahead and take these wires and put them back on the PCB where we originally removed the wires from the original hot end. Remember to be patient during this step. You don't want to damage any of the connectors or break anything on the PCB. The box for the micro Swiss includes a 0.4 millimeter nozzle, but I'm not going to use this nozzle. What I've gone and done is ordered a CHT high flow rate nozzle. So I'll be using this instead, but you don't need to do that as the box includes a 0.4 millimeter nozzle. So at this point, we can go ahead and screw the nozzle into the hot end. Now the manual calls for 15 inch pounds of pressure for screwing the hot end in. Now we don't want to over tighten this for anybody that doesn't know 15 inch pounds is not a whole lot. It's just barely overhand tight. So you can put it in and then tighten it up just a little bit with a wrench, but don't go crazy. The last thing we need to do before we put the cover back on the tool head is to install the silicon cover over the hot end. Now this is super easy to do. All we need to do is make sure that this cutout back here is on the back side where the wires are coming out of the hot end. So at this point, we can go ahead and reinstall the cover for our tool head. It's very important that you don't forget to plug your fan back into the PCB and to screw all the screws and the probe, if you remove one, back into the side of your tool head. So now that we've completed the install for the Micro Swiss FlowTech nozzle, it's important to keep in mind that you need to go ahead and redo the calibrations in your printer for both your PID on your nozzle as well as your input shaping. Now the reason for this is your firmware doesn't exactly know what to expect anymore when it applies voltage to the hot end as the hot end that came with the printer and the hot end that we've just installed are completely different. So we need to give an idea to the firmware exactly what to expect. So that's why it's important. Make sure you do your PID tuning for your hot end. And lastly, we need to do input shaping. Now, why is this important? Well, the mass from the original stock hot end and nozzle and the mass of the micro Swiss in the FlowTech nozzles is completely different. So our input shaping values aren't going to match anything that was originally calibrated with the printer. So it's important to do input shaping anytime you change out your hot end or nozzle. Now, this isn't a difficult process. Anybody who takes the time to follow the steps laid out in this video should have no problems installing the Micro Swiss FlowTech hot end. Now, I think this hot end is an excellent upgrade for the K1 series machines. Not only is it better designed, it's stronger, more reliable, but it also gives you more options when it comes to nozzles. I've made sure to put the Micro Swiss FlowTech down in the description so anybody can know where to pick it up. So go ahead and let me know what you think about this upgrade. I think it's an excellent option for the K1 series machines.